last night, the 9 o'clock hour and then the 10 o'clock hour set fundraising records for a campaign that has already set fundraising records for the most money ever <clears throat> raised. And I think, uh, Mika, people just uh, at, at home, uh, not just Democrats, but I'm sure Republicans, uh, moderate Republicans, swing, swing voters, independents, had to really, really like what they heard when Donald Trump uh, once again had the, had the contrast time and again, somebody that was against freedom abroad, yeah. somebody that was against freedom at home. And that's when Joe Biden really brought it home. He talked about freedom abroad, but then he talked about freedom at home and women's freedom and said back to the Supreme Court, oh, yeah, you say women, they have the right to express themselves politically? Will stand back because they're just about to do mm -hmm. that. That was an incredible moment, especially uh, with the members of the Supreme Court right there. Uh, last night, President Biden took that issue, as Joe said, reproductive rights, head on. He called for a guaranteed right to IVF nationwide and slammed the Supreme Court for overturning Roe v. Wade right to their faces. Take a look. History is watching another assault on freedom. Joining us tonight is Latoya Beasley, a social worker from Birmingham, Alabama. Fourteen months ago, 14 months ago, she and her husband welcomed a baby girl thanks to the miracle of IVF. She scheduled treatments to have that second child. But the Alabama Supreme Court shut down IVF treatments across the state, unleashed by a Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. She was told her dream would have to wait. What her family had got through should never have happened. Unless Congress acts, it could happen again. So tonight, let's stand up for families like hers. To my friends across the aisle, don't keep this waiting any longer. <laughs> Guarantee the right to ABF. Guarantee it nationwide. My predecessor came to office determined to see Roe v. Wade overturned. He's the reason it was overturned, and he brags about it. Look at the chaos that has resulted. Many of you in this chamber and my predecessor are promising to pass a national ban on reproductive freedom. My God, what freedom else would you take away? Look, it's a decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court majority wrote the following. And with all due respect, Justices, women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. You're about to realize just how much you get right about that. Those bragging about overturning Roe v. Wade have no clue about the power of women. But they found out when reproductive freedom was on the ballot. We won in 2022 and 2020, and we'll win again in 2024. <laughs> What an incredible moment addressing the Supreme Court justices right there. Hold that thought for a second and think about everything you just heard for just a moment uh, from President Biden last night and compare it now to this. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. President Trump is going to make a determination what he thinks is great for the country and what's fair for the country. But the fact that I was able to terminate Roe v. Wade after 50 years of trying, they worked for 50 years. I've never seen anything like it. They worked, and I was even, I was so honored to have done it. Well, I did something that nobody thought was possible. I got rid of Roe v. Wade. And by doing that, by doing that, it put pro-lifers in a very strong negotiating position. Nobody did a job like I did, including Roe v. Wade, bringing it back to the states. What I did by killing Roe v. Wade, which everyone said was impossible. Wow. Jen Palmieri, uh, <laughs> President Trump is very proud of that accomplishment of basically creating a women's health care emergency in the United States, literally life and death health situations for women. Talk about being the party of life. They're the party of letting women die slowly or watch their babies die slowly. And that's who they are now. And President Biden took the bull by the horns last night and he addressed it head on. He addressed the Supreme Court head on. Unusual, but these are 
unusual times, aren't they? Yeah, and you could, you just know how, I mean, it's it's so it's so prominent. Women's Minds, Men's Minds in America, it was the very first excerpt they put out was the excerpt about him, take, you know, addressing the Supreme Court when they put that out in the, in the af afternoon. They wanted us to know that was going to be a focus from the guests that the First Lady had um, in her box, you know, someone who, was, who had been affected by IVF, uh, you know, other people that had uh, had to go out of state to get um, abortion health care. And, you know, it was just... It is, uh, you know, as the vice president says so well, they're trying to tell you, they're, they're telling you that you can't decide when to end a pregnancy or when to start a family. Um, I'm, you know, when Jonathan talked about how they made a uh, campaign raise a lot of money in the 9 p.m. hour, that is certainly what we heard at the top of the 9 p.m. hour. And I also have to wonder how much money was raised in the Republican response because... You know, in terms of how women are going to feel about how that went over, I feel like that was uh, that's going to be something that's going to be motivating to a lot of women as well. well